Hey everyone, it's Jason and this is your cruise news update and we have a crazy scene on a Royal Caribbean ship with the sprinklers malfunctioning. The Port of Miami is no longer the king of ports and I need your opinion on this last one. How often do you think your betting should be changed on your cruise? So cruise story number one, what's your favorite cruise port in Florida? So we found out this week that the Port of Miami is no longer the king of ports as Port Canaveral announced their fiscal year numbers and they grew 800,000 cruise ship passengers for a total of almost 7.6 million passengers. The Port of Miami is sitting at 7.2 million. Now each of these ports do have different fiscal years so the Port of Miami in a couple months will announce their numbers and they'll likely be close to 8 million passengers. What's interesting is, is you combine these two ports together and they make up over 40% of all the cruise ship passengers in the world for the year. Crazy how busy these two ports are. Now, do you have a port you prefer in Florida? Is it Port of Miami, Port Canaveral, or do you even like maybe Port of Tampa or Port Everglades? Let me know in the comments. So cruise story number two, and this is a wild scene from the Symphony of the Seas that some are calling the Sprinkler of the Seas as this was a fog machine that set off the sprinklers from the Halloween party in the Royal Promenade. Here's a little video of it right here. So reports are that this went on for three to four minutes and it happened around 10.30 p.m. right when they were supposed to have a Halloween party in the Royal Promenade. Now, people are saying that by six in the morning, the ship looked totally normal. Everything had been cleaned up. Can you imagine the crew just going into action and taking care of everything? I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. This looks like a thunderstorm inside of a cruise ship. And obviously it happened in the Royal Promenade of one of the largest cruise ships in the world. Were you on this ship or have you ever seen anything like this? Let me know in the comments. So before I get to cruise story number three, I would ask that you please like this video and consider subscribing as it does help the channel grow. If you could do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much. So cruise story number three, and I want your opinion on this. How often do you think bedding should be changed out on your cruise? And I'm talking about a seven day cruise. So this was brought up to John Hill, the brand ambassador for Carnival Cruise Line because Carnival only changes bedding out once a week at embarkation. Now he did say and clarified that if people want their bedding changed out more often, they can ask their cabin attendant and they'll be happy to do so. But by rule, they change it out once a week. Now we were just on the icon, we've been on the ovation, celebrity and princess in the past year and they all changed out bedding midweek. And I really do like this. Now here's my thing. I'm on vacation, I want a little bit of a pampering experience. And John tried to ask, hey, how often do you do it at home? And doing some research for this video, about 75% of people change out their bedding once a week, 14% change it out every two weeks, and only 11% change it out more often. But in my opinion, like I said, I'm on vacation. I love the pampering experience, love the change out of sheets midweek. What do you guys think about this? So I appreciate you guys watching. I also wanted to say a shout out to two subscribers that I met on the Icon of the Seas, Colin and Jesse from Belgium. They gave us some great tips as we are going to Belgium next year and I do appreciate them being subscribers and I thank them for the tips. Now, if you see me on a cruise ship, please come up and say hello to me. I love meeting you from all over the world, and I do appreciate you watching the channel. So thank you once again for watching, and I will talk to you soon. And until I do, happy cruising.